This is Paul Brarin here at VMworld 2018 US, and I'm visiting Nick Kivo's booth again. And Anton, we met last year. How you doing, Anton? Hey, Paul. How are you? Good. So uh, the news. Uh, so with Nikivo 7.5, you already had vSphere 6.7 support. Uh, but now, just a few hours or so before getting on a plane to get here to VMworld, I heard about 8.0. Can you tell me more about what's in 8.0? Yes. Yeah, so today we're introducing Nikivo backup and replication 8.0. And we have some new features. For example, we support uh, vSphere 6.7. And uh, the, the main feature that we deliver today is the site recovery. So I would like to show you a little bit of the demo of site recovery, if you don't mind. No, that'd be great. Uh, you want to switch sides here? You got that? OK. So you're actually doing a live demo of Site Recovery Manager. So I can do a site recovery demo right now. Uh, just a second. Let me duplicate the screens. OK. And uh, once we cover that too, and you get that going, I'll also just mention uh, your NAS support. So I'm going to show over here the list of uh, this video is rotating. Let's get that showing. You have a new NAS vendor that was announced. Uh, Netgear was when? A few months ago? We support, uh, with this version, we support Netgear Readiness as one of the NAS devices Nikiva can run on. So right now, this is uh, QNAP, Synology, Asus Store, Netgear Readiness. QNAP, as well as Western Digital. So, yep, this is the new. All right, thank you. And you got the uh, screen set up over there? Cool, let's head on over there. So, yeah, you were saying? So, as I was saying, uh, site recovery, some companies ship this product as a separate solution and charge very high amounts of money for this. In the Kiva, we actually deliver site recovery as one of the features inside our feature set. So I'm going to show it to you right now on this screen. So site recover to be able to do site recovery, and uh, site recovery is also known as uh, orchestration of uh, an automation of uh, recovery from disaster. You need to go to create and select site recovery job. So after this, I am able to pre-create actions that Nakiva will take when to be able to recover from disaster. And those actions can be failover, failback, and as you can see, many others. So let's draw a simple use case when a company is going to failover to their DR site, DR site after a disaster. So I would create failover as the first action, and I would pick the replicas to which I want to fail over. As you can see here, Nikiva can power off source VMs during the failover. So the source VMs will be shut down and the replica VMs will start up. Let's do a simple example of a wait. So we can wait for 24 hours until we restore the production environment and do a failback. So the failback will synchronize the changes that have been made to the replica VMs and send those changes back to the original site or a new location. So this is up to you. And on step number three, you can also power off replica VMs and continue working with your production site only. So this is a simple example of the three steps you can pre-configure in site recovery job. Going next, we have network mapping. So we can enable network mapping rules for all the VMs as well as the re-IP rules. So the site recovery job can run in two modes, production and test. So you can schedule the test run using the scheduler here. You can run test site recovery every five days, for example. And finally, on step number five, you can specify the recovery time objective. So this is the time within which Nikiva will, within you, which you would like Nikiva to be able to recover from disaster. And you can set 10 minutes, for example, and see if the software can meet your requirements. Finish, and that's it. Site recovery is ready. All right, thank you for that overview. I'm going to bring up a couple of things that are kind of home lab specific. So people trying out uh, NFR code, do you have any comments there about requests for NFR? Has anything changed about your program? Or 
We still have the NFR program, so everyone is welcome to go to the Nikiva website and download NFR code. We also have a try and buy promotion right now. So on the on Nikiva.com, you can download the software, try it, and get twenty-five dollar gift card for trying Nikiva. Okay, great. And for people that are not familiar with Nikiva, many ways to consume it. Like I showed you, NAS is you're not just talking about NAS as like an iSCSI target where it's backed up in a VMF repository. No, you're talking about Nikiva code running on the actual NAS. That's an important distinction. Plus, you also have an OVA, an appliance download. That'd probably be a little more typical in a home lab where someone just wants to back up VMs to a local data store, like a you know eight terabyte or ten terabyte uh, SATA drive, some cheaper uh, stores. So I just want to point that out in case you weren't aware of that. And then finally, for usability, for home lab, one of your strengths is just kind of the easy update button. So I see that button link in here. Is that true even for major releases? So if someone wants to go from say 7.5 to 8.0, they can use that easy upgrade button. Is that correct? Uh, yes, this is correct. So update is very easy. Just click the update button, you get the new update, you get the software updated. Uh, I would like to add more about the NAS device support. So yes, when you install Nakiva inside the NAS device, you basically built a backup appliance. And because of those NAS boxes are so inexpensive and Nakiva is so affordable, you get a very inexpensive backup appliance which other companies sell for thousands of dollars. And you get good performance because you avoid the overhead of SIFs and NFS. Nikiva sits directly on the storage, so it can write into the storage directly without having to go through NFS and SIFs. So you, you get super performance with inexpensive backup appliance. All right, well said. Well, thank you very much, Anton, for your time. It's great talking to you today.